Optional training is simplified syntax for reading optionals inside optionals. Now that might sound like the kind of thing you'll use rarely, but let me show you a code example so you can see how helpful it is. Here we have an array of names, Arya, Bran, Rob, and Sansa. We'll then say let chosen equals names dot random element, question mark dot upper case, nil coalescing no one. And finally, print out the next in line is chosen. And this uses two optional features at once. You've already seen how helpful nil coalescing is for providing a default value if an optional is currently nil. But that question mark dot upper case, that shows off optional training. The ability to say, if the optional has a value, run some new code on that value. And so what it's saying here is, if the optional has a value inside, unwrap it and then carry on. In our case, uppercase stuff. So if we can get a random name, uppercase it. If we can't, no coalescing to no one. The magic of optional chaining is, it silently does nothing if the optional has no value inside, if it's empty. It'll send back the option you had before. It's nil. And that'll then go to nil coalescing and become no one. And so this means without nil coalescing, the return value of an optional chain will always be an optional. It was optional before, it's optional now. And that's why we still have nil coalescing here to ensure it's always a real value in our string. Now optional chains can go on as long as you want as as soon as any part of the chain sends back nil, the whole rest of the code line is ignored and it sends back nil. Of course, nil coalescing can still provide a value. To give you an example that pushes optional chaining harder, imagine this. We want to place books in alphabetical order based on their author names. If we break it right down, we find the following. We have an optional instance of a book struct. We might have been given a book to sort, we might not. Second, the book might have an author or could be anonymous. Third, if it has an author, we want to try and read the first letter. Remember, just the string being there doesn't mean it has actual letters inside. It could be an empty string, quote, quote, like that, empty string. And so try to read the first letter. And then if the first letter's there, make sure it's uppercase. And so the authors with lowercase names, for example, bell hooks, are sorted successfully. Here's how that would look in code. I'll say there's a struct called book with let title string and let author optional string. Might be an author, might not be. We'll do var book is an optional book equals to nil. And then let author equals book question mark dot author question mark dot first question mark dot uppercase nil coalescing a and then print author let's run that back and boom a comes back because book was nil so it reads if we have a book and the book has an author and the author has a first letter in their name then uppercase it and send it back. But if any of those steps fail, there are, there's nothing in the book, there's no author, there's no text inside the string, da, 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 send back A instead. Now, admittedly, um, it's rare you'll ever dig that far through multiple optionals, but I hope you can see how delightfully short the syntax is.